This video is sponsored by Hippo. No, not that kind of Hippo. This kind of Hippo. This happens to be the brand name of uh, the ink and the papers that we use a lot. And ink-wise, I always use this and they did not provide all these boxes of ink to me or all these boxes of paper because I bought most of that. But they did provide me with some tumblers here to demonstrate, so I'm going to do that here shortly. I'm going to make four of them for the 4th of July theme. First, I want to talk a little bit about the ink. From the very onset of when I got into sublimation, I had been doing some research and pretty much settled on the Hippo brand because from looking at people with some printer problems with uh, their lines clogging and that, I know that this ink does not separate if it sits for a long time, form sediment and plug lines and plug heads and so on. So I have never had an issue with that in any of the printers that I do fix for people. And no, I'm not in the printer fixing business. Don't start sending me your printers. We, I always use the uh, Hippo ink to refill them if they're going to be used for sublimation. I wish that Hippo made ink for my sawgrass printer because that stuff is really, really expensive. This is very, very reasonable. So moving on from the ink to the paper. They have 13 by 9, 11 by 17, 8 and a half by 14, which I don't have sitting here right now, and then the 8 and a half by 11, which is your more standard size. Uh, the 11 by 17, 13 by 19, I can only use that in my sawgrass printer. So therefore, obviously, I can't use the Hippo ink. But the sawgrass ink works just perfect, and it should for what it costs. Yeah, if you've got a sawgrass printer, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I uh, have an Epson 2720 down here, and I've got a 2800 over on the other side of the loft up there that I use for the 8.5 by 11 and 8.5 by 14. Those work just perfect. So now we're going to get into the tumblers. So what comes with this tumbler here? You get, obviously, the tumbler. You'll get a lid. you get a bottom. You get some shrink wrap if you're going to be doing them in an oven, which I'm not. I have an actual tumbler press we're going to be using. So for images, well, it just so happens that I have some whipped up here, and it is on hippo paper. There's a watermark in the back, so this hippo. And I've got four of these I'm going to make with the 4th of July theme. And although I have done a video before on how to set up a tumbler, a skinny tumbler, I should say, for sublimation, we'll walk through this again just in case you're new to this or maybe missed that or just want a refresher. So let me get some stuff cleared off here and we'll get into the technical parts of this. So here is one that I already have uh, sent to the printer and I'll show you how I set these up. We'll start with a new one here. Now I go to document properties here make a little bit of a change. This is from A4 to US letter and we're going to be working in inches. So now I need to bring in a different image. Go down here to import. And I forgot which one I wanted. One fourteen. So we go up here to one fourteen. Open that up. Of course, it's going to be way bigger than the paper, obviously. So I have measured the tumbler, and it measures nine and a half by eight. I want to lock this little padlock here. I'm going to change this here to inches. I go with 9.5. And then down here, of course, all that's the wrong direction. So we'll rotate it 90 degrees. We'll get it centered up here. And this is not a seamless uh, image, so there will, you will be able to see the seam on it. This wasn't designed to be seamless. So now all I need to do is send this to the printer. Down here to print. And I'm going to be using my Epson 2720 for this. We'll get down here to more settings. And we need premium presentation paper matte quality high and I always do a print preview 
here to more options turn off high speed and we need to mirror the image Let's click OK I can click print and that will go to my printer here shortly and it'll open up a print preview there it comes so that's what it's going to look like and I just hit print so what comes with a tumbler well you get this nice little gift box here and inside there will be the tumbler the lid of course this will be inside the tumbler you need to take that out before you do your sublimation and you put this on after you're finished and we'll get into that here in a minute you get a stainless steel straw or a cleaning brush and then inside the carton are these little shrink wrap things here that you would put on shrink wrap and then uh, bake them in a convection oven but we're not going to do that we're going to put them in an actual tumbler press so the images where did I get them the uh, image files came from designbundles.net and they were purchased no they're not pirated no I didn't make them I purchased these and did the download and then I needed to size them up to fit the paper and the tumbler and I did measure the tumbler you need to measure the circumference around and you need to measure the length mine are nine and a half around by eight inches this way paper is eight and a half so this will work out just fine like this and try not to touch the outside of this with your fingers try to keep your hand on the inside like that and hold it by the center of the base there you don't want oily fingerprints on that and you also want to make sure that tumbler is clean before you put the image to it okay so once you have your images printed and you've given them time to dry you're going to need to do a little bit of trimming although you may be tempted to use one of these trimmers like this one here by Cricut don't because it can snag the surface of that paper and it'll ruin your image so although these are nice tools and good for a lot of things this is not one of them so you're going to need to trim some of the white space off of here and what I do is take just a maybe a 30 second of an inch of color along with it when I do that trim and you can either use the good scissors or you can use one of these rotary cutters So as you can see there, hopefully you can see that, uh, just a little sliver of color I left on there. And the reason for that is when this wraps, I do not want any white space to show. There will be a seam because these are not seamless, but I do not want to have uh, any white space there. So now next, put the blade away. we we'll get our tumbler laid down here make sure you do this right side up I did made that mistake once and we'll bring this up and we want to make sure the color overlaps your cut edge now I, did, I left the white space over here because that's not going to show and there are there is some white space at the top you also want to make sure it's straight and square and you want to get it as tight as you can it's a good idea to do this a few times again make sure you are square sometimes just a little tap like that will square it up now here there's an option some people and I do this on some items is I will tape this around the bottom to make sure that that goes in around the curve again make sure it's good and tight you'll need some tape Keep it good and tight. And once you have a few pieces on there to kind of hold it good, tape the entire seam all the way down. And you could use one long piece of tape, but I like my little tape dispenser here and sometimes I don't stay real straight like that so there you are you want to tape good all the way around now on the bottom you can take your edge and tip it in 
This takes a lot of tape if you're doing this, but I'm going to show you one as an example. Make sure you don't slide your cup or your tumbler up in there when you're doing this. But you're going to have to put these very close together. And there will be some little wrinkles there. There's no way to prevent that. Nature of the beast. Whether I do this on every one will depend on the design. It also helps if you kind of roll your thumb over it and your fingers kind of get it started in there. But it does take a lot of tape to do this. So when you get done you'll have something that looks like this. Now just in case you miss something there we'll prep another one. Get that out of the way. Okay, again, just taking just a tiny little sliver of color off the side. Also, try to keep your fingers off of your image. So there again, just a little sliver of color there. Again, make sure that that overlaps. Also, don't skip taping down the seam. Did that once thinking it was a shortcut and the results weren't so good. So does this paper bleed through? No, it does not. I have never had Hippo paper bleed using the 125G paper, 125 weight. I've never had a problem with bleed through. So. Somebody's going to ask why I don't put butcher paper around this before I put it in my press. It's because I don't have that problem. So here again then, and I will tape this around the bottom as well. Okay, I got my three tumblers here all prepped. And one of them, I did not do the bottom on, so I can show you the difference when we get done here. You'll be able to see the difference. And a lot of people ask about this tape dispenser. Some people love them, some people hate them. If you'd like to get one, there'll be a link in the description on where you can get it. It's on Amazon. They're not expensive. Uh, and it does hold, actually it will hold three rolls of tape. I only have one on there right now on this. And as you turn this, it makes an inch and a half long piece that you can do, well, a little inch and a quarter, I guess. You can do this with, and it just cuts them as you go. And you add the dispenser on the side, you can pull long pieces. So what's the difference between the blue and the brown? Well, this is blue and that's brown. Otherwise, they work the same. So let me get over to the heat press, we'll get that warmed up, and we'll do some sublimating here. Okay, time and temperature. Everybody wants to know, 365 degrees. We're going to press it for 70 seconds. I'm going to take this out, rotate it, 180 degrees, and press it again for 70 seconds. So I always start with my uh, heat tape up so I know what, how far to turn it. So I'll just slide this in. I don't need gloves right now. Also make sure you set the pressure on your press before you uh, start doing this. Don't have it too tight or too loose. It needs to have some fairly good pressure to it. So we'll let this run down to 70 seconds. It's 70 seconds and then I'll rotate it 180 degrees. So we'll just open this up. We'll rotate that 180 degrees so the tape is now down. Close it again, another 70 seconds. Just open that up, take this out. Got a heat mat over here, I'll stand that on. Do not hot peel these or they will ghost. Get our next one set here. Just give her a little spin, back to it. If you're wondering about these gloves, uh, wahoo! These are actually food grade gloves and uh, they're excellent hot gloves. They do run a little big. Uh, I wear a size 11 glove and these are actually 10s and these are even just a little bit big on me. But you can get these on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to get you a hold of some of these. No, they didn't sponsor this either. They're just a good product. Now, just need to let these set and let them cool. 
as I said, don't try to hot peel them. And don't peel them until they're comfortable enough you can handle them with your bare hand. Okay, time for the reveal. They're easy enough to handle. And you're probably going to have to do a lot of paper tearing. They should not stick. I've never had a problem with them sticking. If you should get some white residue on the uh, tumbler, it'll come off with just washing off the water. It'll come right off. So here's our first one. And the, as I said, this is not a seamless design. But you, so you can see the seam right there. However, because I was careful enough to a little residue on there, there, come right off. You always want to make sure you do not have any white space in there because that makes it really noticeable. And by wrapping around the bottom, you see how the color wraps right around. And when we get to this one down here, which is still hot, I'll show you what uh, the difference is. So we'll get to the other one here. Sometimes you can get a run here and get lucky, but I'm not getting lucky here. As you can see, we got really good color transfer. That's one of the things I like about the Hippo products. Oh, there's my second one there, Eagle. Ah, a little white residue, wipes right off. There again, not a seamless design. You can't see the seam, but it's not objectionable. Nice wrapper on the bottom. Yeah, this one here is cool enough to handle now. Here's my third one. And again, not a seamless design, but the seam is not objectionable. Here's the difference here. You see, that's not real consistent around the bottom as it is on one of these. So whether or not you want to tape the bottom or not, uh, some of it does curl up and cover. Of course, once it's sitting down like that, you don't see it anyway. But that is the difference. So now I'll get this cleaned up. I'll show you the final steps to it. These come with a rubber bottom that goes here, like so. And it tells you here, hand wash only, stainless steel, coffee, tea, water. It's got a little recycle picture there and a picture of a cocktail, it looks like. So you want to make sure these are clean. I wiped them down with alcohol first. That being rubbing alcohol, not the good tequila. And we'll just get that centered in there. Give it a good push. Well, there's what the finished product looks like, and of course, it, you can use these uh, stainless steel straws if you wish. I prefer to drink right out of the tumbler myself, uh, not a straw person, but they are there if you would wish to use them. So there we have it, it's 4th of July themed tumblers for the upcoming 4th of July, and that's coming right up here next week. So hopefully I'll get this video out quick enough that if you wanted to whip up some of these, you could. There'll be a link in the description for everything we used here today. Again, this was sponsored by Hippo because they provided me these tumblers. There's actually four of them. I only did three here, uh, saving one for another project. So again, link in the description for these, the ink, the paper, everything we use. And as I look at these, I think I might need to make me a shirt to match them now that I got the graphics. And again, the graphics came from designbundles.net. I'll put a link in the description of where you can go on there. It's uh, thick as $6 for the package and you get like 38 of them or something. Different designs for both the straight and the tapered. So not sponsored by them either. It's just some place I get a lot of my graphics from. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel and don't be scared to subscribe. Ring that little bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. Thanks for watching. I'm Roger in the shop. Actually, in the loft above the shop because it's cool up here and hot down there. Got the air on. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.